let's talk a little bit about this race to 2030. Um, time is not on our side, as we know. Um, you know, the countdown to 2030 is on, and, and this clock is ticking. So, you know, speaking of clocks, um, CDP is turning 20 this year, and we've accomplished a lot in the last 20 years. Um, and the good news is the case for action is getting stronger every day. But um, the fact is, you know, things aren't happening fast enough or big enough. The scale and pace aren't keeping up with the, the problem. So, um, therefore, we need to do much more in the next 10 years than we have in the last 20. Uh, and to be successful at that, frankly, we need to start bending the curve significantly in the next two to three years. Um, you know, 20 years ago, CDP set out to create a systemic link between financial information and environmental information with this idea that that would help shift capital uh, along the way. Um, and, you know, we did so at the time by um, asking 200 companies on behalf of 35 investors uh, to disclose some of their environmental information. Fast forward to last year, we had 550 investor signatories requesting information. They collectively manage just over $96 trillion in assets. That's for the T. Uh, and on the other side, we had over 8,400 companies disclosing to CDP, representing over, well over 50% of global market cap. So it's a, it's a big number. Surely it needs to get bigger. Um, but uh, that's uh, kind of the, the stage we're on. What we also know is the inaction is both the costliest and riskiest uh, scenario, and it's one that we're not willing to accept. Uh, we can see on the news every day that the situation is critical. What we do collectively in the next two to three years is critical. Um, in CDP disclosures, what we saw from companies more and more aligned with the TCFD is um, a significant shift in disclosing uh, both uh, climate and water risk, especially uh, of all the companies disclosing in North America, 44% actually put a financial number uh, on these risks. Um, and uh, of these 44%, they collectively identified about $294 billion, I wanna make sure I get the numbers right, uh, in potential climate-related financial impacts in the next three to five years. This isn't out to 2050. This is like the here and now. Uh, globally, this number is over a trillion dollars in what we see in our CDP data. Uh, North American companies also identified about $22 billion of near-term water-related impacts. So at a time when, frankly, political solutions are stuck in neutral or some cases in reverse, uh, you know, the change needed now needs to happen at the speed and scale of business. And so the good news is, is that not only addressing these risks is possible and feasible, but it actually makes good business sense. And I'd like to, uh, to talk about that and tell you kind of some of what we're seeing in uh, what you're all and, and collectively the business sector is telling us. So just uh, a few days ago, as Joel mentioned, we released our, uh, what we call our A-list. So these are basically the companies in our climate, water, and forest disclosures getting an A score. Um, and what we're seeing is a few things. I mean, so climate disclosure is now the norm. Uh, companies not disclosing, frankly, are quickly running out of excuses for not doing so, and investors are losing patience. I think we all are. Um, if you don't respond to an investor request uh, to disclose to CDP, you get an F, kind of like in school. You don't turn in the work, you get an F. Uh, if you're leading the pack, you get an A. That's about 2% of total responding companies. Um, and then if you get an A on all three of our disclosures, climate, water, and forests, uh, we call you a triple A. Uh, only one U.S. company achieved that this year. They're also the only U.S. company that got an A on forest or our deforestation. Uh, that tells you that there's more to do. But please join me in congratulating uh, Hewlett Packard in being the only U.S. company for a triple A. So what did we see in those disclosures? Um, you know, we saw a few things. The level of ambition and the scale of action is, is on the rise. That's good news. Uh, companies leading the way are also um, uh, starting to gain competitive advantage in, uh, in the marketplace. In fact, we spotted four specific uh, kind of key themes in our A-list companies. One, um, they're actually outperforming the stock market as a group. Now, for seven straight years, the A-list companies as a group has outperformed 
their uh, relevant market benchmarks by an average of 5.5% a year, which, you know, if you work in the stock market, that's actually a pretty big delta compared to the average benchmark. Uh, and so this creates a, a really interesting connection between, uh, you know, environmental performance and leadership and financial performance. Two, they're setting ambitious uh, emission reduction targets. In fact, 100% of our A-list companies um, have an active greenhouse gas reduction target. More than two-thirds of those are science-based targets. Actually, to date, uh, nearly 800, actually, it might have passed that number today. I think it was 796 uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. But nearly 800 companies have now set or committed to set science-based targets, uh, including about 20% of the S&P 500 and growing fast. So these aren't just uh, uh, on the smaller side of companies. Uh, this compares, uh, so 100% of our A-listers, about 75% of all disclosing companies have an active greenhouse gas reduction target. Only 56, though, have, 56% uh, have an active water uh, security target. So we need to see more of that. Third key theme, uh, we're seeing A-list companies taking comprehensive action. 97% are engaging their full value chain in their climate approach compared to only about 25% of all disclosing companies. Um, and 100% of water A-list companies are actually also doing full value chain engagement on water. And number four, one of the key themes we're seeing is A-list companies are seeing opportunity. They're not just addressing risk. Uh, they know that sustainability presents actually an exciting risk to race to the top, an opportunity to innovate and rethink business as usual and to start deploying capital in this transition. Uh, this is not for them just about achieving compliance at the least cost. Um, and uh, it's not just about being good, it's good business. You know, we're seeing 84% of disclosing companies collectively identified $831 billion of near-term business opportunities and it kind of leaning into this transition, uh, an additional about $340 billion in addressing water-related issues. Again, this is near-term, three to five years. So collectively, that's $1.2 trillion of business opportunity that's for the taking for those who are kind of, again, willing to step out and lead. So what's not to like about that? All right. Um, so, you know, at CDP, you know, part of what we do is we're keeping score. We help set the pace and the tone. Um, you know, we help the world see whether we're on track to meet the goals of the Paris Agreement, and that's going to be really important this year as we lead up to, uh, to COP26. We help you kind of see where you stand relative to your peers and your sectors and your regions. Um, you know, without standardized disclosures, kind of the environmental uh, field is blind and accountability falls flat. Um, so what do we need from you? For sure, if you're not disclosing, you gotta start. Um, as I mentioned, uh, you know, you gotta begin now. We can help and others in the room can help as well. Um, now's not the time for small ideas or half solutions. You know, it's time to kind of all step out of our comfort zones, get it uncomfortable and ambitious in the right direction. Uh, you know, if you want to lead, start by setting a science-based target. Again, at this point, anything less will fall short. So uh, set a target and then start acting on it. Um, engage and empower your suppliers. Uh, we see in our CDP supply chain disclosures that your suppliers really want to be part of the solution. So bring them on. Uh, that's going to give you scale, and it's going to give you a lot of new uh, ideas to work on. Um, and then make the necessary investments to seize those opportunities. You know, it's not just Wall Street that needs to shift capital. Talk to your C-suites, talk to your boardrooms about starting to deploy capital in this low carbon transition uh, uh, until your capex starts moving in the right direction. Change, uh, you know, won't really follow. Um, and then, you know, invest in this transition to net zero economies uh, and put that at the heart of your business strategy. And then finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, use your corporate voice responsibly and for impact. Uh, you know, engage your customers. Maybe they're already engaging you, but if they're not, engage them. And then, um, you know, advocate for good, sound environmental policy. It's one of the most powerful tools you have in your arsenal. You heard from uh, uh, Joel yesterday about this AAA framework that several of us uh, in the uh, environmental NGO uh, community have been working on. There's more information out there in the expo if you want to uh, find out you know, how to bring that back into your organization. So just in closing, I mean, you know, managing your own footprint used to be good enough for leadership. It's not anymore. You know, we're looking for system level scale and ambition. Um, this is a race we must win. It's a race to the top. The view's great from up there. So let's look forward to it. Um, 
the risk of an action are great, but the rewards for decisive action are even greater. So time to make history. Thank you. <laughs>